Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode. Hope you enjoyed the new intro there. That logo was redesigned by my friend Rion who's helped out a lot with the show and did the original one as well. I'd just like to say thank you very much to that and there's going to be more from him coming soon. So I'm excited for that. Anyway, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about E3, the biggest event in gaming. I know it might be called the Liverpool Retro Gamer, but I do love modern games as well, especially ones that come from franchises that I've loved in the past. I just thought I'd talk about now my favourite ever E3. I was in mine watching it like 2 or 3 in the morning. My mate Mike had stayed over and he'd been playing Warcraft 3 and he announced Fallout 4 and the Final Fantasy 7 remake and I was going nuts. I woke him up like 3 in the morning like shaking him just like lad I can't believe they're actually doing it because Final Fantasy 7 is my favourite game of all time and honestly it's between The Last of Us and um, Fallout 3 which is number 2 and 3 on that list and I know they're more recent games but that's how good they really are. Now that's going to lead into what I was actually hoping for with this E3 2018. Now with the stuff that's already been um, promoted sort of thing and people know that it's coming, I was really looking forward to seeing some stuff from Shenmue 3 but more importantly from Final Fantasy 7 the remake. We basically haven't heard anything in about 3 years and it's, the production of this game has been absolute turmoil but I just thought that they were going to pull it out the bag and just blow everyone away. Um, Unfortunately that didn't happen but you know it is what it is. Now out of the stuff that's in a pipe dream that I would love to see I would have been so so happy if they'd announced like a Final Fantasy X 3. Not so much in the vein of number two but more just the original one. I love that game so much it's in my top five games of all time and I know there's no rumours around it and that but I would have absolutely loved to see that. In terms of other games I would like to see, I would like to see um, the new God of War for PS4 which honestly is probably one of the best games I've ever played. I would love to see a little teaser for a sequel for that or maybe a bit of DLC or something and I was also hoping, well one of the biggest ones I was hoping for was I was hoping we were going to get a time split as a remaster but that one really is a pipe dream but I can just see that on the Switch now being a hell of a game. Let's get the positives out of here early. So in terms of what I didn't like for me 3, I didn't like that we didn't see Shenmue 3 and what I touched upon then, we didn't see anything from Final Fantasy 7 a remake. It's been 3 years, I just feel like, you know, anyone who's a massive fan of this game, the minute that they said it was going to be a legitimate remake and it wasn't going to have that many elements from the original game in it, so especially in terms of the turn based combat and all that, you know, that was always a blow from the beginning but I was more than happy to wait it out and see what was going to happen. When he said it was going to be episodic and all that, you know, that was a bit of a nightmare but I'm not going to focus on that too much, I mean that could be its own video in itself but just the fact we didn't see anything, it does not bode well if you're a big fan of that upcoming game. And one of the other things that wasn't that great, Xbox are announcing like this big new streaming service to do and I know PlayStation have got this as well but it just shows that they're really quite intent on going towards that um, no digital media um, f uh, push that they're doing. That's a big reason why they've lost so much of this console market at the moment. One good thing that I did like seeing from them though is that they're still pushing the well basically the two best exclusives with Halo and with Gears of War. I wish they'd just bring Lost Odyssey back though because that was a great game on the Xbox 360 and everybody knows that Xbox really needs some exclusives at the minute. The other thing which I was really disappointed about and only because we had a little bit of hype for it just before E3 was Pokemon Let's Go. Now I thought this was just going to be what everybody has wanted for so long even though the Switch is portable. You know everybody's wanted Pokemon properly on the console. Everybody's wanted, yeah, I've heard a lot of people saying he wanted like a open world sort of thing and all this, but honestly all I want is like a Pokemon Red remake, give me Fire Red with slightly better graphics now and just put it on there and that's what I thought we were getting, but when you actually look at the gameplay for it, oh my god they've watered it down so much, I mean don't get me wrong I didn't play Pokemon Go or anything, but the way they've done this it's just, it's a bit of slap in the face for anyone who's actually a big Pokemon fan, I mean well I am of the original games, I'm not like a massive fan, I haven't played anything past Gold to be perfectly honest, played a little bit of Ruby actually so I'm chatting a bit of shit there, but yeah it's a bit weird it's so watered down and it's just not the game i was hoping for at all so you know that's a heavy one nintendo i've got to be honest now time for the positives and we're going to start with square since final fantasy 7's brought me down so much they didn't have the greatest uh, conference to be honest but the things he did show i was really happy with 
Now, I've never been a Kingdom Hearts fan, to be honest. I never had it on a PS2 or a PSP or it. I know I have got it on a PSP behind here, but I've never actually played that one. I've just collected it with the intention to play it. I recently got the two remasters that they did for the PS4, and I'm definitely going to play them. But Kingdom Hearts 3 looks great, and I'm genuinely really excited to get a hold of that game. Another one that looks amazing is Dragon Quest XI. Now, I really like Dragon Quest VIII on the PS2. As you thought, that's basically Dragon Quest's version of Final Fantasy VII, in my opinion, and I'm really happy they brought that back. And I think that's going to be a bit of a sleeper hit. It didn't get as much attention as I thought it could have got and should have got for me free. But the big thing I was really happy with was Square was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, other than the collector's edition being crazy expensive, and I think it's actually sold out or not available for pre-order anymore, that game looks quality. I, I wasn't the biggest, biggest fan of Tomb Raider back when I was younger, but now with these two remasters or reboots, should I say, that Square's put through, they are unbelievable. They are honestly some of my favorite games I've ever played. The first one in particular, you can see there's a real labor of love that went into that game, and I'm so excited for the sequel. Nintendo also had a really good show on E3. Um, the new Metro game looks great. My favorite game in the Metro series, by the way, is actually probably, is it Samus Returns for the Game Boy? I think that game is excellent. And I really like Super Metroid, obviously, on the SNES. That's a hell of a game. I was really hoping we were gonna see a bit more Star Wing because the Wii U one, in my opinion, was a massive letdown. I just couldn't get over the controls. Even when I messed about with them, they were fucking dreadful. It's good that Fox is getting a cameo in another game. Um, Starlink or something like that, I think it's called. But I wish he just had his own game. Just give him, just do a remake of the first one or the N64 one or something like that. Come on, give it, give the people what they want, Nintendo. It was also a bit weird that they're doing even more 2DSs or 2DS XL or whatever the hell they're calling them nowadays. You'd think that they'd just let that die off or maybe move into something else, but I guess it's still selling really well. In terms of what they really did great though for me personally, I was loving the new Smash Brothers stuff. It looks so good and it was nice as well because it gave me, you know, it gave me a little bit, a little bit of hope for Final Fantasy because Cloud was in that as well, and I'm really looking forward to actually doing Solid Snake versus Cloud. That's going to be amazing, especially on the go with the Switch. Another thing which was really cool for Nintendo, and I think is going to be a, not necessarily like a massive console seller, but I think it's definitely going to be a big push in the right direction, especially with Pokemon coming out. Even regardless of it being very watered down, I know that's going to sell a lot of systems. They brought in Fortnite. Now, I uh, made a little post about this on Twitter, and so many people were hating on this game, and I believe it's just because it's an online game, and you know, and, and it's very popular with the youth of today, um, well, I guess myself included, um, and, and like that, a lot of people sort of, you know, they're a bit standoffish with, but to be honest, I've played, I've played a few games with Fortnite, and it's a very fun game, and uh, quite addictive as well, so I'd try to uh, wean myself off a little bit, but uh, I'm going to do a little uh surround video for it just for everybody who likes it so much you know what i mean but yeah nintendo did a lot of good stuff there's some things that i would like to see but in terms of what's coming out i'm very happy and i'm looking forward to it bethesda um i said i get the negativity out the way earlier so i'm gonna try and look at some positives and maybe sneak a little bit in so they've announced a new Elder Scrolls game, which so many people were angry because they'd already teased Fallout 76 and they were like, what about Elder Scrolls? Well, you've got it. Number six is coming. Now, I played not a massive amount, but I played a fair amount of Skyrim, but I was in the middle of playing New Vegas at the time as well. And for whatever reason, I just, I just didn't want to play Skyrim anymore and I never played Oblivion. So I'm sure at the time I'll be much more into it, but right now I'm not that pumped for Elder Scrolls but I'm really happy to bring that out because I know there's a massive fan base for that and especially with all Elder Scrolls Online a lot of people have not been happy with that at all to be honest. They've also announced, um, what's it called, it's Starfield, that's what it's called, sorry about that, they've announced Starfield and if I can have Fallout in space I'll have it any day so I'm genuinely really really looking forward to seeing what they have for us. Now we're going to move on to the main event here, Fallout 76. When rumours started to say that it was going to be an online game I was a little bit, I was a little bit put off because you know, I'm not a big online gamer at all. In fact, other than the Switch, I don't play online games. And well, I play a little bit of Warcraft Three online, but I just get my ass whooped every time anyway. But that's another story. But I'm not a really big online gamer. But the more I thought about it, I was thinking I would actually love to play like Fallout Three or Fallout Four or New Vegas or whatever. I'd love to play that with a friend on co-op. And I think if they increase the loot and the enemies 
You could get away with two to four players. I really do think you could. But what looks like the problem with Fallout 76 is it seems that it's the only NPCs are like robots and whatnot. But every human player in the game, from what I've heard, is an actual human player. And you can't have like a closed party, you know, two to four players just all playing with each other. Um, so I think that's a fucking massive mistake if that is I really hope I'm wrong. I really, really hope I'm wrong. But I've heard that that is the case. And um, uh, another thing as well, they've done this collector's edition. It's £175, but it's so fucking good. You get a power armor helmet, and um, God, I'm debating what I can sell to get a hold of that, because even though I've got a feeling that this game is not really going to be for me, I will fucking wear that helmet like every day. I'll sleep, I'll shit in it, I'll do everything in that fucking helmet, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm seriously considerate. The bag looks a bit shite, though. Just give us a backpack. Who fucking uses a duffel bag nowadays? But yeah, for the 76, it's either going to go one way or the other. It's either going to be an amazing game that no one's going to be expecting or it's just going to be a bit of fun, to be honest. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Either way, I love Fallout, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. And um, I'm just happy that there's more Fallout coming out and it hasn't just disappeared like a lot of games have nowadays. Now, the main event, Sony, PlayStation. Where do I even begin? I'm telling you right now, they win it every year because they just got they got the best games they really have i mean i just can't get around it their exclusives are out of this world and i i really didn't have any hype for that ghost of a uh, tashuma is it i'm probably butchering that but that game looks excellent looks a uh, very i don't know how to say it really but it seems like it's got a lot of depth and the environments just look incredible on it so i'm genuinely looking forward to that death stranding as well man I know a lot of people are angry and they're like, oh, we still don't know what this game's about and blah, blah, blah. But that's just Kojima in a nutshell. That. He loves mysticism. And if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan, just be patient and have faith because I really believe in this guy. He's, he's the very best out there. He really is. And the game just looks absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to play that. Let me tell you. Spider-Man as well. My favourite superhero of all time. I'm so happy he's getting a game, a good game. I know I know some of the ones on the PS3 and, uh, and the Xbox 360 were quite good, but it didn't seem to have the same type of feel that this one does. Some of the enemies look a little bit weird, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't really digging uh, Rano's new costume or Electro, to be honest, but I've got faith because the game looks like it's going to actually be quality. That's another one with a collect edition. It's very expensive, so you're not going to be seeing a fucking Spider-Man figure on these walls unless, you know... Unless Sony would like to send one over, that would be very nice, but I doubt that's ever going to happen. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that Spider-Man one. I think it's going to be amazing. And um, yeah, man, very excited for that, let me tell you. But the big one, the big game, the game of E3, the thing I was looking forward to more than anything else in all, well, other than Final Fantasy VII, but what I consider to probably be the best game of this console generation, or what I predict, should I say, The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 1, like I said, probably my second favourite game of all time. And number 2, oh my god, does it look good. The mechanics look so, like, like they showed a bit of gameplay for it and it just looks so smooth. And uh, like Ellie's matured so much in it, but she's just as ruthless as she was when she was younger. I, I, you know, they didn't say too much about the story or anything like that. There's a lack of Joel, a lot of people are worried about that, but um. I've got a lot of faith in them. I've got nothing but faith in them. Especially since I've got so into Uncharted in recent years as well. You know, number four and Lost Legacy were just... I mean, they were pretty much flawless, to be honest. So, Naughty Dog are this shit. They've got it down. I have nothing but respect for them. And I've nothing but, um, but faith in them as well. The Last of Us 2, you've heard it here first. Game of this console generation, I'm telling you right now. Right everyone, so that is the end of the video. Hopefully it hasn't been too mundane and boring for you. I do always try my best not to just have it me straight up in front of camera. I try to mix it up a little bit. Quite similar to the Q&A, that's how I tried to edit this one together and everything. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry if my views have offended anyone, blah blah blah. I'm just fucking being honest with you. These are the games that I'm legitimately excited for. But Honestly, if there's anything that you think I've missed out on and, you know, that you think I'd be into, just tell me in the comments or any of my social media or anything like that. I'm more than happy to listen to what you've got to say. At the end of the day, I have this YouTube channel, not just for my own memories, but to meet like-minded people and discuss things with like-minded people. We're all, we all love games and we're all excited about these ones coming up. Or at least, maybe some of you are excited about the ones I mentioned. And if you're not, let me know why and um, all that type of stuff. Like I always say, 
Thank you so much for watching the videos. From the very bottom of your heart, it means a fucking world to me. If you keep watching them, I'll keep making them. Until next time, peace.